We're going to talk about a federal system of government. We've already covered unitary and confederate, and a federal system of government is where we live, which would be the United States. The United States is a perfect example of the division of power between the state and local governments, which is exactly the definition for a federal system of government. It is when power is divided between a central government and regional state government. As you can tell from the diagram, the center circle is just as large as the outlying circles. The outlying circles represent the regional or state government, and the central government is the center circle. In a unitary system of government, if you remember, the center circle was much larger with small dots around the outside, showing that the central government maintained most of the power and control. In a confederate system of government, in a confederation such as the United Nations, which is an example that we talked about, the regional states would have a much larger circle and the central government would be the weaker center. The power in a federal system is divided, so it goes both ways. The power that the national government has is typically outlined through a document. Um, a document may describe the rights and responsibilities of central and local government. So the document that we have in the United States, if you'll just take a minute and think about that, what do you think that document is? You can pause the video. If you said the Constitution, you are correct. This should be a review from last year. And as we discuss a federal system this year, we're going to move to applying it to different countries in Europe, Latin America, and Australia. Now the next question we need to ask is why is federalism important? Federalism is important for two main reasons. It decentralizes politics, which means that not all power resides in D.C. Our national government is located and centralized in Washington, D.C., but because we sh share and power is divided, we also have our state governments that represent um, what, whatever the desires of our state constituents are. Also, because our politics are decentralized, meaning that all of the action doesn't happen in D.C., it's, it's divvied up, it gives more opportunities for citizen participation. And this is usually through elections and elected officials because, as we, as we know, the state level represents, have, has representatives such as the House of Representatives and the Senate who are voted in by the individual states to represent their, their state concerns on a national level. Also, it decentralizes policies. Federal and state handle different types of policies. So typically, the central government or the national government will handle policies that um, pertain to the entire nation, whereas certain state policies or policies that can be left up to state officials and state governments would be um, marriage or drinking laws, stuff like that. States define policies that best reflect their desires. In the news recently, we've seen uh, the push for um, for gay marriage to be legalized in all the different states. And because it is left up to state policies, some states have decided to pass and b get on board with legalizing gay marriage, and other states are slow to follow. So basically, whatever the citizens in the state desire will reflect will be reflected through the policies that actually become passed. Um, just take a minute in your notebooks and jot down what you think an advantage of a federal system would be. Now we said that the United States is a perfect example of a federal system so we're going to break that down a little further and see how it actually functions. You have your delegated powers, which would be your national government, and your reserved, which is your state government. Your national government covers things that's good for the, the whole country. So with a, a two, uh, or a, a, a two government, a split system, a shared system, you have 
the ability to maintain unity, but also diversity. The national government is responsible for printing money, regulating trade through interstate, interstate trade, um, trade that happens across state borders, but also international trade. And they have the ability to declare war. That's something that the state government cannot do. And they also have the ability to make treaties. The state government um, conducts elections, establishes local government, regulates intrastate business, any kind of business that occurs within the state, and also marriage, drinking age, just different policies that may be able to be made on a state level. Now, the concurrent powers that exist are powers that are shared that can be separate or simul simultaneously enforced, such as taxes, and the ability to make and enforce laws. Now, there are some denied powers as well that neither state nor national government have the ability to do, and that comes down to the Bill of Rights. So the state government or national government cannot pass any laws or enforce any laws that violate our, our rights as dictated or laid out in the Bill of Rights. For example, the freedom of speech. They can't pass a law that would violate our First Amendment right. And the Supremacy Clause is basically a clause that says that all national government and, and power is basically that the Constitution becomes the supreme law of the land. Now, the supreme law of the land means that the state can't come in and make a law that is delegated to the national government. And then there's the Tenth Amendment that basically says anything that is not delegated or given to the national government is left up to the state. There are different federations in the world and we're going to talk about a few of them as we continue through the semester. Um, as you notice them on the map, most of the countries in the world are not federations. Most of the countries in the world are actually unitary forms of government, which are the blue areas outlined, and the federations are the green. I've pulled some of the uh, federal types of government in the world out for us to look at. Um, we have Germany, which is here, Mexico, Canada, the United States, Russia, Brazil, and Australia. These countries in particular we'll take a closer look at as we continue through and apply the federal system and take a look at how their countries execute the systems of power, the distribution of power within their country and how their government works. Now if you also take another minute, we will discuss this in class. If you'll jot down in your notebooks, why do you think many large countries have a federal government? 